Hi, I'm Denchi, and in today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to install and use Nginx on a Debian server to serve a secure encrypted HTML web page. So I have Denchi.live, and it's my personal little website. And as you can see, it's a HTML page. It's got, you know, basic HTML features, even HTML video over here. It's got like a, and it's all encrypted. So it's a secure connection. So in this tutorial, we're going to use this guide written by me on how to actually accomplish all of this as quickly as possible. So let's begin with what we need before we start any of this. We need Debian. Well, in this case, we're using Debian. You can use a lot of Linux distributions to use Nginx or Debian is my personal choice because it's stable. If you were using a router that requires port forwarding, so you don't have like UPnP or, or whatever, you should port forward the ports 80 and 443. So those should be port forwarded on your router. 80 for basic HTTP and 443 for encrypted. HTTPS. You should also have your own domain with the ability to create DNS entries. So like an A DNS entry for your specific website. So, so in today's case, we're going to be using test.dential.live. And as you can see, if you go to test.dential.live, which I've added a DNS entry for my public IP address that I'm using for that server, you'll notice that it gives me a 404 not found with Nginx. This is because Nginx is already installed and running on this machine right here, which I'm accessing via secure shell. Ideally, once you've installed and turned Turned Nginx on in your machine, you should be able to type in the domain address that you've set for that machine in your DNS entry, and you should get a 404 not found because we haven't done any configuration yet. So we're gonna start with this. Let's begin by actually installing Nginx. So it's pretty easy, just sudo apt install Nginx just like that. It's already installed on my machine. And just before I begin with actually doing all the configuration files, consider that Nginx runs as a systemd service. So you should do sudo systemctl, I guess status Nginx, you can check it right here. So systemctl, then a command and an Nginx, you can use it to stop it. I'm stopping it right now, or we can start it again. And if you wanna stop and start it, you can do restart. So that's what we're going to use in today's tutorial. We're going to use sudo system CTL restart nginx every time we make a change so we can take a look at what our change is actually done. So let's begin with actually where we're going to put our web page. So there's a directory called var in your you know, Linux installation. So we're going to make a directory in var called www. It should already exist. But just in case if it doesn't, we're going to use this command. So sudo make a directory dash p to make it recursive var www and we're going to call this one test.denchi.live because it's general good practice to make this directory this is what we call the root directory for your web server you should name it so in this case test.denchi.live after the domain name then we're going to change directory to var www test.denchi.live and consider this directory it's empty at the moment but everything in this has to be created by either the www-data user which we'll talk about maybe at the end or the super user. So that basically means you have to put sudo before all the commands to do things in this directory. So you're going to do sudo vim. Vim is my text editor of choice. And we're going to make a file called index.html. Now you should probably just import whatever website you've designed into this directory. But today I'm just going to make a simple website directly on the server. So I'm just going to write a little HTML page here. I'm going to say Denshi was here. I'm going to press escape colon write quit. So WQ right there to write that to that file. So now we have this directory var www your domain of choice in my case test that engine live but it can be any domain. It could be denshi.live. It could be jimmy.com or whatever. But it doesn't even have to be named after a domain. But it's good practice to do that as I said before. And we have a file named index.html there. That's all we need for now. Now we're going to talk about how Nginx manages configuration. So if you ever install the program in GNU Linux, you know that it normally makes a directory in the Etsy directory. Nginx is no exception and it has a directory called Nginx in the Etsy directory. And it's got a couple of things. The one thing to pay attention here is the nginx.conf file. The nginx.conf file is the Nginx configuration file, as I'm sure it's very easy to guess. Nginx, when you load it up with your systemd service or just by running it, it will check this file. And in this file, by default, it tells it to check this directory, sites enabled. Everything you put in sites enabled is website configuration. So that's what we're going to use today. However, there's also a folder or a directory named sites available. In sites available, you put in all your configuration files to then symbolic link to sites enabled. You don't actually have to do that. You could just make everything in sites enabled. However, I personally recommend making your configuration file in sites available. So making a file here, a text file or whatever you want to call it, 
with your configurations in here. And then by using the Unix ln command, so sudo ln-s, so creating a symbolic link to this directory. So you make a file in here for your configuration and then link that to sites enabled. Once that's done, Nginx will be able to see it. And we're gonna restart Nginx. We're gonna see if our website loads. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna first of all, vim, so use our text editor, etsy Nginx sites available, then test.denshi.live. And as you can see, it's just an empty file. We're going to copy this configuration. This is a very simple, just serving a HTML website configuration. You're going to want to pay attention to the server name. So this is your domain name. You're going to have to set this to your domain name. This isn't just a meta thing like the root directory where it could just be anything. You're going to want to set this to test.dentia.live or whatever domain you're using because you have to do that for Nginx to properly understand. It has to resolve that domain name to a specific web page for the root. Well, we made a folder called test.denshi.live in the root www directory. So a directory called test.denshi.live. And that's where we put the index.html file. As you can guess, the index option simply tells the web server what file is the index file, so what to serve first. Anyway, we're gonna right quit. And now if we do systemctl restart nginx, and then we're gonna just open up a private tab over here, Go to test.denshi.live, you'll see that it serves Denshi was here. So that was our HTML page we made before. And we can tell Nginx is functioning perfectly fine, except you'll notice one thing, it's not secure. This connection is not encrypted. There's no encryption certificate, there's nothing. So how do we encrypt our website, you ask? Well, that's very, very easy to do with a tool called CertBot. We're going to want to install Python 3 CertBot and Python 3 CertBot Nginx. So sudo apt install python3 dash certbot and python3 dash certbot dash nginx. Now you don't actually have to use the python3 variant, but I find that it's generally, you know, more recent and it just has less errors. I've had more success with the python3 version. And as you can see, I've already got them installed, but you should install those. So we talked before how we have this file. So etsy nginx sites available, then test that that should live. And it has this configuration here. To actually serve an encrypted web page, you have to add a few lines to this configuration. But instead of doing that manually, certbot can do that for us. So let's do that. sudo certbot dash dash nginx dash d and then test.denshi.live. Just press enter and it will begin generating it. Okay, so once generated, you'll be met with this prompt. You can choose to either no redirect or redirect. So what this basically means is, if you take a look at my Denshi.live website, if we go to HTTP for forward slash forward slash Denshi.live, you'll see that despite me typing HTTP, it automatically redirects to HTTPS. So it goes from HTTP to HTTPS. That's the redirect option. I recommend choosing option two. So we're gonna press enter here. And there you go. It also says that it redirects all traffic on port 80 to SSL. So it's added that to our configuration file and it's all done. And now we can actually check the file. So if we cat Etsy and GenX sites available, then test that and live. As you can see, there's a lot of lines added. So this is a previous configuration, but it also added these lines. So this is all managed by certbot. It's got this little comment over here. So this is all done. Then we're gonna sudo systemctl restart nginx. And now that that's done, we can check test.dentinal.live and see if our connection is secure now that we've done that. And as you can see, little lock is there and it's got a secure connection. It's got a valid certificate and everything. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm gonna be making more of these kind of web tutorials, probably one about how to host your own matrix server or how to do a LEMP stack. But for now, I've been Denshi. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Goodbye.